Why, hello, and welcome to, ah, oh man, I think it's our fourth panel of Kaiju Con Line. My name is Kyle, and I used to host the Kaiju Cast, and it is my privilege to be here today, my honor to be here today. Uh, we're going to be talking with some very special people. First, though, let me bring up my sort of co-host for this event. This is Jim Cirinella of Celebrity Icons. Jim, welcome to Kaiju Con Line, man. Hey, so, so I'm not one of the special people? You're special. Everybody always tells me I'm, yeah. I'm pretty special. So, <laughs> All right. So before we spend any more time on how special Jim is, I would love for everybody in the chat who are watching live. First off, thank you for people watching live. We really appreciate that. We're broadcasting both to Facebook and YouTube. And we are going to bring our first guest. And please welcome to this digital stage, King Kong Escapes. Linda Miller. Hi, Linda. Thank you for joining Hi. us today. Yay. It's my pleasure. I'm so glad to be here. And not only is Linda here, we have another classic sort of gaijin actor in the uh, fish out of water from the 1960s. Gamera versus Virass's Carl Craig. Welcome. To hey. Hey. You. Thank you for being here. Whenever I chat with Carl, I love his background, <laughs> which is real. <laughs> I just want to—I want to go there and play all the guitars. Oh, you can have a blast here. <laughs> I'm right. like your background, Jim. Right, <laughs> Jim. I didn't realize you lived in such a fancy area. Yeah. yeah. Well, my my hotel room had some problems, so I decided to broadcast from the beach. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today on this particular panel, we are going to be talking to these people about their time in Japan, talking about how they found themselves there, what it was like to live in Japan in the 1960s, and especially what it was like to be involved in the two films that they were involved in. Actually, uh, Linda technically was involved in two films over there, right? Just this yes, two? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Linda was involved with both King Kong Escapes, where she had a starring role, and I would say a supporting character in uh, that's The Green That's very slime. generous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I want to be generous to these. I want you guys to come back to these if we <laughs> have to keep doing them, right? Right. Uh, and of course, like I said before, Carl uh, played Jim Morgan in Gamera vs. VRS. The uh, the plucky young scout, one of the two that uh, it, it saves the day with the with the other kids, I bet. Save the world. <laughs> well, thank you guys both for being. We here. need you now, Jim. Yeah, right. We're, bring mean, your yeah, friend. Carl. Can you call Gamera to come and like destroy this coronavirus for us? Oh, I wish. I wish. <laughs> All right, so I would love to start with uh, with you, Linda. Could you tell me a little bit about how you found yourself in Japan in 1967? Well, 1965 is when I actually went there. Oh, wow. And I went there kicking and screaming because I didn't want to go. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force, and he was supposed to have been stationed to um, Spain because I wanted to be an interpreter at the UN, and so I wanted to go to the University of Madrid. So as the Air Force does, they sent him to Japan. So um, we wound up in Japan in, right after I graduated from high school in June of 65. And uh, it was sort of strange because once we landed, I had a sense, um, a feeling of that I had come home. And ever since then, uh, almost from the very beginning, I fell in love with Japan. I thought it was awesome, you know, and um, so, I got there uh, in June of, of 65, and then I started modeling almost within a month or two after that. And uh, at one point, in, I think it was in 67, Arthur Rankin saw the cover of a magazine that I did weekly and found out that I lived in Japan and uh, put two and two together, knew I would be less expensive than getting an American actress. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> so he contacted me and... Uh, we had dinner. He told me he wanted me to be in the film, and I, it, it just, it just all happened so fast that I didn't even have time to think about it. And that's, you know, the very short version of how I wound up in King Kong Escapes and in Japan. Oh wow! Uh, well, let's come back to the rest of that story a little bit later. Carl, how did you find yourself as a youngster 
living over in Japan. Was it a similar tale to to Linda there? Yeah, well, my, my mother's Japanese, so my, my father uh, was in the Army, um, met her when he was convalescing from uh, a war wound in Korea in 1950, uh, married her, brought her to the States, and um, when I was six months old, we went to Japan the very first time. And I stayed there till I was about five or six, and then we came back, and then within three and a half years, I was back on a ship this time, going back to Japan. And so I spent basically the first 10 years of my, 10 of my 13 years of my life in Japan as a military brat. Um, oh, wow. The difference for me was, I mean, I, I spoke the lingo because I grew up there, and yeah. And being half Japanese, you know, my wife, my, when she met me, she said, when she looked at me, she said there was, she knew there was something funny in the wood pile because of my eyes and everything else. <laughs> um, but uh, so I, I had a great time living over there. I mean, I spoke Japanese all the time and, and yeah. that's basically how I got the job in the movie oh, uh, because yeah. um, Noriyaki Yuasa had been um, asking Dai to get an American. They, he wanted an American in the movie and they finally capitulated and said, all right, all right, get your American, you know, so it just so happened that a, a producer at Daya was talking to my mother's oldest brother. They they were neighbors and in conversation said, Hey, look, man, we're you know, they're having a hard time finding an American kid that could speak Japanese. And so my uncle said, Hey, you need to contact my sister. You know, she married an American serviceman. They got a blonde, blue eyed kid speaks Japanese perfect, you know, and so that's how I got the job. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I should I should have mentioned up at the top of this panel, we are going to be doing some Q&A stuff later on after we sort of get some of these stories out of the way. Uh, so I would imagine the last 10, maybe 15 minutes of the panel, we're going to open it up to questions. So if you have questions, just kind of hold them until the end. Maybe they might even get answered uh, between <laughs> now and then. Uh, Jim, you want to go ahead and kick off some, some of your own questions for these cats? So Linda, before... Um... Before you get the role in this movie, yeah, you actually um, you had another role as a personality on television. Oh, after oh. after becoming a model, correct? Well, that was my very first job. Is um, I was on a, a day, was it daily week? I can't remember. It was called English for Million and um, Ni No Ego, and uh, we did the. A half hour program was pumped into the junior high school and uh, James Harris was a Japanese American, or I think he was Japanese and British and he was the host. And then he had a Japanese girl and then he had me, the English speaking girl. And we did little mini, they weren't really skits, but just, you know, the, um, the script had little dialogue there and she'd speak Japanese and then I'd speak it in English. And yeah, that was my very first job that I ever had when I was in Japan. So did people or the audience recognize you from yeah. English for Millions when yeah. you got into King Kong Escapes? Yeah, that was my very first taste of celebrity. Um, <laughs> I, rem I remember my mom and I were at Tokyo Tower and a bunch of junior high school kids came up to me, you know, and they have their boards to sign, their sign boards. And I, I was shocked that they recognized me and they wanted my autograph. So that was the very first time I kind of got the bug. <laughs> so somewhere in Japan, somebody has a yeah. shishi with your signature pre-King Kong escape. Yes, yes. That's yes. interesting. <laughs> and I probably signed it in Japanese as well, because it was like, it's a point of pride that I could sign my name in Japanese, you know. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So then Carl... Um, So we talked a little bit, uh, just so everybody knows, Carl did an audio commentary and interview for the new um, Arrow Blu-ray release that's coming out. He's one of the only actors from the entire Gamera series that's actually on the Blu-ray release. So that's Still pretty alive. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> There's, yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's a problem also. Uh, yeah. He's the only one left alive from the entire <laughs> Showa era. Yeah. But um, so you're a um, uh, you're a kid in Japan, um, you were actually familiar with a lot of the tokusatsu at that period, um, the TV shows and, and the movies. Tell everybody about that. Oh, man. Well, you know, what was really fun, like I said, is I could understand Japanese. And so we only had like one station in Japan on the Far East Network that had any yeah. English on yeah. it. And it was only for a couple hours a day. 
So you had to watch Japanese TV, you know. So Magama Taishi, Ultraman, all those guys, those are like my favorite shows. I watched them all the time. I'd go, what? You know, and I'd run around and all kinds of stuff. And I really, I really loved it. I enjoyed it. And so when I actually got the gig, my dad said, hey, you're going to audition for a Gamera movie. And I was like, what? A Gamera movie? Holy mackerel. You know, I was like, I know who Gamera is. You know, it was really kind of cool. So that I already knew all those guys, and all the characters and all the monsters. So it was fun. It was interesting uh, what Carl's saying because I remember watching I Love Lucy in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was funny. You could even, yeah. you know, you yeah. didn't, I didn't know a word of what was being said, but it was really funny to yeah. see her speaking Japanese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you knew about Gamera beforehand. Uh, did you? Did you already like the the movies that came out prior, or which did you like better, Godzilla movies or Gamera movies? Uh, you know, I wasn't really picky. I liked everything. Awesome. Um, the 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 man in the rubber suit stuff was like, you know, it was like who could <laughs> not like that back in those days, you know. Uh, and when when you look at some of the stuff that's out there now, I I think back about how cheesy all that really was. And I would sit on the set and I would actually watch the guy in the rubber suit try to stomp on buildings and all the piano wire and everything they used back in those days to make it happen. But uh, yeah, I knew them all and I, I liked them all. So, I mean, there wasn't too many that I didn't like, I don't think. Excellent. Uh, just a couple of quick notes. People, we got a lot of people watching right now. Uh, once again, thank you for watching live. The Horrible Imaginings Film Festival says they can't wait for that Arrow release, even though they own all of the movies. Uh, I am also very excited for that release as well because I have a commentary on it <laughs> as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a great set. Um, tomorrow, we have a panel with Matt Frank and James Flower from Arrow Video. If anybody wants to check that out, just wanted to throw that out there before we move on to more of these guys live in Japan, lives in Japan. Mm -hmm. So, Linda, tell me a little bit yes. about your uh, first day on the set or oh. I guess the first day you went to Toho. Oh, the first day I went to Toho or the first day on the set? Because mm. we had pre-production with makeup and hair and costume, even though I only had three costumes. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, well, that's a good question. How, how, how long uh, was pre-production on this film for you? Oh gosh, you know, you're asking me to remember 50 some years ago. Um, I think a couple weeks, maybe something like that. You know, I and remember. Then, Carl, how long was pre-production on your film? Uh, about <laughs> two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Linda. So, what? Uh, um, oh. What did that entail? Um, I, I remember um, them putting the uniform on me and the hat, which I thought was. Silly, <laughs> you know, that little hat. Uh, and I remember them um, doing my hair and my makeup, you know. I mean, I didn't have, uh, it wasn't a, like a glamorous uh, role. So it wasn't like I had eyelashes and, you know, wigs and all that kind of stuff. But uh, just just some basic stuff. And then they they would, uh, vote, um, not video, what did, what did they do back then? <laughs> Film. <laughs> Filmed it. That's what they did. They, they, <laughs> they, they filmed it and I guess decided it was okay because there wasn't uh, any changes after I did it the first time. So, and then so they, what took, was, they took was, some still shots too. Um, so I was going to ask, what was the, uh, um, there's some location filming in your, uh -huh. in your production, but a majority of it's on, a sound stage, correct? Yes, yes. So almost everything that you did was on a sound stage. Like ninety nine percent, probably ninety nine percent. But now, for Carl, um, for Destroy All Planets, um, a lot of that was on location. Well, I, you know, it was. I would say the preponderance was in the studio, but we, we went to uh, Oshima in the, in the ocean area when we filmed all you, the beach scenes. It was like two too? or three days. What's that? You went there too, to Oshima? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so did we. Oshima, all those places down on the coastline down there where yeah. they have the black lava sand. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's where we spent the submarine scenes and all that stuff down there. We only spent like three days in a hotel, maybe two nights in a hotel. So three days total. So it's three days worth of shooting. So 
and and that hotel is also featured in the film. Right, right, and the model right, and everything else. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. yeah, they made a special effects set. Right, that's their right. main special effects set in the film. Is the right. is that hotel on? Exactly. What's, what's that? What's that hotel called? I didn't. Uh, oh, what was the name of the hotel? I can't even remember now. I can't even remember now. It's famous. I mean, it's a landmark on the water there back in those days. I mean, there's probably a lot more stuff there now. There wasn't very much back in those days. So yeah, we got We have to look that up. We uh, yeah. we didn't discuss that in the commentary or anything. Yeah. Else. Yeah. Yeah. After I was going through everything, I thought it might have been good to get the name of that hotel. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it's still there. It yeah. is. It was just too. It was too odd, and it was the, the you know the architecture. So it's probably still there. I, it, I just think it's interesting the difference between the two productions. I mean, obviously Toho had a lot more money and um, mm -hmm. a lot more. Um, uh, yeah, that was like the heyday of their film yeah. production. So they had um, uh, they didn't just have to put all their resources on this one film. They were already up and running. They had full, um, you know, costuming departments, uh, tokusatsu mm -hmm. departments to handle all this stuff. So all these, they just kind of churned out all these films, but at a you know very high rate and a very high quality at the time. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Daie was, when they made Carl's film, was already in financial problem, trouble, you know, yeah. having yeah. trouble. And, um, uh, and they did what a lot of the TV shows did, which was utilize real locations. I mean, uh, so... The Boy Scout Jamboree, as you said, was that was a real jamboree that you guys kind of photobombed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and and what about um, so Linda's costumes were all um, tailor made for her. Yeah. Uh, what about your Boy Scout costume, Carl? <laughs> Actually, um, the uh, the the Far East Network uh, Boy Scouts of America. Um, they made sure that I had authentic patches and neckerchiefs and everything <laughs> to make sure that I look like, you know, the, the scouts over in Japan at the time. Did oh, they have a cool. giant monster wrangler patch that went on the... No, you know, that was another there. thing. Uh, we actually talked about that as a joke, you know, like what kind of a, you know, badge do I get for this, you know? Being yeah, part you, of the yeah he was movie. working. Yeah. <laughs> he was working toward his, yeah. his yeah. defeat the outer space aliens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we, we have some... Uh, badge. Yeah. <laughs> We have some uh, photographs we could throw up here. Well, actually, you can probably do that, Kyle. There you go. Ah, yeah. So let's see if we could. So this one is Linda's. Let's see if we could uh, zoom in. You could tell us what some okay. of the people we've got in here. I'm the blonde girl in the middle. <laughs> The only black person. You're kidding. You're kidding. <laughs> I see it now. I see it. Okay. Yeah. Stand and out. I, and I'm sitting right between Takarada and Honda. And then Rhodes is on the other side. And then next to Rhodes is Henry ok Okawa, who was the interpreter. But I remember that day. I didn't know. I was a little bit shy. A lot shyer than I am now. But I was a little bit shy back then. And... I didn't know quite where to sit. And Honda-san looked at me and, you know, did that come here with their hands that the Japanese do? Yeah, this way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a very funny gesture, I think. Anyway, so he did that, you know, come here, Linda-san. And, um, and then he had me sit right next to him, and I felt really, I felt very honored and, and kind of special that he did that. Because you've got, you know, on the other side, you've got Hamamiya, the big, big big star and so i just kind of figured he'd sit next to her but anyway that that was kind of special for me and then on the very front row uh oh well you won't be able to see where it is anyway there's a gentleman there that right after uh we wrapped um he was swimming and he drowned and i remember everybody being really sad about it i can't remember his name but my hairdresser's there. My makeup guy is there. Um, is is the uh, fellow directly in front of you kneeling down? Is that uh, Tomoyuki Tanaka? I is that the producer? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't <laughs> tell for sure. Let me see if we could. More no, it's not him. Enhance. Yeah, not it's not him. Okay. Doesn't doesn't look like him. 
Um, and, and directly behind you, all the henchmen in the black. Yes, yes. Shed, that, that's like the who's who of Toho yeah. royalty. And they were so nice. You know, <laughs> a lot of them were very smiley faces until they got in front of the camera. And, you know, their personalities didn't match the roles that they had. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool to see. Wow. So cool. Let's go to another one. I have to zoom out here for a second. And, and then we've got Carl's graduation photo. Oops. <laughs> let me go back. Well, it's not going to let me zoom in. Uh, that's all right. So we've got, uh, so you're right there next to Yuasa. Uh, yeah, and there goes our uh, uh, Takatsuki Toru. He's on the other side. side, right? And that's your father sitting next to you. Yeah, to my he, left and to the he's right. He's a good-looking guy. Why didn't they put him in the movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no American he, he, adults needed for that film, Jim. Yeah, he, he. No, there's there's a lot of American adults in there. There's yeah, uh, there's a oh. Dobie, Peter, Dobie Takahase. Yeah, Peter Williams is yeah. right next to. Uh, Takatsuka Toru. Yeah. And then there's the, um, let me see if I can, why that's not working. If I could maybe zoom in. We've got the three women. There we go. The three women who co starred in the film with Carl, Lucky Devil. Oh, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I have that picture that I have a black and white we took at the Boy Scout Jamboree where the three okay. of them stood around Takatsuka and I, and I, I refer to that picture as fringe benefits. <laughs> so I was like 11 and they were like 19, you know, right. so <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, you know, <laughs> well, uh, up behind your dad is one of the other, um, actresses. The other two are next to, uh, Peter Williams yep. mm -hmm. to the side of him, but next to the girl that's behind your dad is, uh, Hongo. It's Hongo san, the yeah. star. So um and uh, we were we were joking about that. Um he's probably in the film for about five minutes and uh what is he you, you met him one day, right? He was there maybe one or two days while you were filming. Yeah, on, on set, um on set and then he came he actually came to a couple of shoots in the studio just to kind of <laughs> chuckle around and this one particular shot was we, we got everybody in the studio. That was the day he was down at the studio too. So but then when you watch the actual film that with the Japanese version, you and Takatsuki Toru are almost second to last the way you're billed in the Oh, yeah, the exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We were the slugs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and look at you now. <laughs> yeah. So here's another one we've got. Oh. Oh yeah, see the guy on the left is Henry Okawa. Mm. He's he used to live in um, in the states, and he spoke very very good English. And um, I didn't speak Japanese to the extent that Carl could, but I could understand pretty well. Uh, but uh, of course, the studio had him there for me and also for uh, uh, for Rhodes. But he was really really cool. He was a very funny guy. He's the one that told me <laughs> that when you got a facelift. They lifted your whole face up over your head, <laughs> and he. So, <laughs> so why did he? Ha so why did he happen to know about facelifts? There, there you go. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we're talking about Hollywood or something. I don't know. But he's so, um, to death. Yeah. Uh, so this is an interesting uh, a point between the two productions we're talking about here. So your script, even though you spoke some Japanese and could mm -hmm. probably have handled the dialogue in Japanese. They had you speaking yes. English yes. along with, uh, with Rhodes. Yes. So your script would have been in English and yes. Takarada san holding his script, his would have been in Japanese. Yes. And you were both, uh, had to do your lines in the different languages. How did that work out? Between it worked, it worked out really well. Uh, it doesn't sound like it should, but it actually did. Um, I, I think it was fine for Rhodes as well. I mean, because I understood what they were saying to me because I knew the script and because I knew some Japanese. So 
when they would speak to me in Japanese, I understood. And so when I spoke back in English, it, it didn't seem that, that strange. Um, and I still have my script and it's, it's in English, my, with some, you know, little notes and stuff. But then, um, yeah, so Rose and I would say, hello, how are you? And then the Japanese would come back with Japanese. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, and it just flowed amazingly. It, it wasn't hard at all. And what do you think the, well, so what was the process like to make that work? Or did do you just think the actors, all the actors instinctively knew where the others were finishing their lines and knew how to play to that? Well, you know, during rehearsal, they would hear like, what's the last word we're going to okay. say? And, and same with, we would hear what their last word was going to be. Um, but I mean, we didn't have really long drawn out dramatic scenes. They were pretty short. And so it, it was just, it just was very easy to follow, you know, and the tone of your voice, like when you're finished with a sentence, you know, your voice goes down and then they would know that it's time for them to speak. So it just, it, it was so uncomplicated that it, it's amazing. What was your um, impression of the direction coming from Ishiro um, Honda in terms um, of your character? Is there anything special he wanted you to convey as um, I think know, in the, Susan I, Watson? I think in the beginning he probably was frustrated with me, although he didn't show it, uh, <laughs> but he would be inhuman to not have been frustrated because I had no, I mean, literally no, I wasn't in a school play. I, you know, nothing, no experience. So I was completely raw and um, I'm sure I wasn't able to do a lot of things that he wants, but you know, when on the Island, when, when we first meet Kong and he's, he's fighting the, oh, what is it that he's fighting? T-Rex. Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. So he's fine that, and I'm in, and he lifts me up and he puts me in the tree, and I'm supposed to show that I'm afraid. He came to me and he says, "All right, this is what I want you to do. I want you to put your hand over your mouth, your fist over your mouth, and and move back and act shocked and afraid." And he, and he says, "I want you to do it just like that." So when I'm in in the tree and I'm afraid and I'm going, "Oh, you know," that is exactly what he told me to do, and so I did exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. You know, but he was such a sweetheart. He was very. He was kind of like a father figure, my impression. And he was gentle, but he was disciplined and firm. And um, he ran a tight ship, but it, but there was no stress. It was the, if it hadn't been for the fact that I was so nervous and uh, had no confidence, rightfully so, in what I was doing, um, it would have been the easiest set in the world to be on. It just was really stress-free. How was so it working we, with, uh, before you go on, Jim, just how was sure. it working uh, between a sort of seasoned American actor, Rose uh -huh. Reason, and uh -huh. a very seasoned uh, yeah. megastar, Takarada-san, yeah. uh, uh, during that production? Well, there was a little testosterone flowing there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they had um, very, very quickly uh, had respect for one another. And... Um, gave each other credit for who they were and what they had achieved in their profession. And they got along pretty well. I mean, they're, they're, you could see sometimes, you know, one was trying to get something over on the other, but it was very good hearted and good natured. And That's they got along really, really well. And I thought, I didn't think at the time, but now looking back, it was kind of brilliant casting because Takarada was the right person to have matched up against an American macho guy. And it just, it worked perfect, I thought, you know. Well, how about um, your interaction with Amamoto-san as the main villain? <laughs> he's my favorite character. <laughs> uh, and, and the reason he's my favorite character is because he looked as odd in person as he did on the film. <laughs> A living had, skeleton. Yeah, and he, had these, he had these spindly little legs, you know, and <laughs> that funny tooth or mouth that he had. Um, and he would walk around the set in, I mean, I, we didn't have that many scenes together, but he would walk around the set with his cape on and he'd fling his cape 
you know, back and forth, you know, and he just was a real character and very, very nice man. And, and he spent time because my mom was on the set with me all the time, protecting me, <laughs> you know, because I think I was 19 at the time. And uh, so he was very friendly with us and talked to my mom a lot. And yeah, he, he was, he was pretty cool. Fantastic. So Carl, what's happening in this photo? Uh, this is what, um, this is a die um, photographer opportunity. Um, I don't have this one in my collection, but this is when we shot the scene where the guy's eyes lit up. Ooh. You can see the, the three guys in the back. They have the oh, little yeah. prosthetic eyes on there. And then um, the, the, the ray gun, the ray gun uh, with the beer can on the end. Uh, <laughs> so that's the ray gun that he, they used. Um, and um, this, they just took an opportunity to take a still shot of, you know, these guys surrounding. So there's nothing like this actually, actually happened in this, uh, in the movie. Um, but, uh, it was, it was fun. These guys were kind of the same way. They're really nice guys. They're all joking and funny and everything. But when they got on the set, man, I tell you, they actually scared me a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> of course I was a kid, you know, I was like 11 years old. So it's a little bit different. Um, That's a creepy I, I, look, I didn't though, care if eyes. I made mistakes or on my loan, but then of course you also come over and bop me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> get me going again so but uh, he treated me like a kid but it's at the same time you know he did respect the fact that i wasn't a japanese guy and sometimes you know he wanted me to do things that might have been a little over the top but um i tried to do the best i could considering because i had the acting experience or skills either so mm -hmm. so what was the difference uh between linda's production where they're speaking english and uh, your script was all in japanese right yeah, my script was all in Japanese. Um, yeah, so when we, you know, we rehearsed lines and stuff like that, I, I had to know and key on the exact words of whoever was in the scene. And, and it was actually pretty easy for me because it was just usually Takatsuka and I, you know, together. There, you know, him, we go banter back and forth. Very rarely was there a third or a fourth person involved in it. Like when we, we get chewed out by Hongo and uh, Professor Dobe, you know, Hakase, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, we had to pay attention to what was going on. But um, most of it was uh, just between, you know, Takatsuka and I. And uh, what was it like with the uh, with Hongo son? Because um, he was the big star in the. He he was the actually pretty films. cool. You know the the scene where the he was a big American car aficionado. He had like a Plymouth Fury and the, <laughs> the Malibu. The Malibu in the movie when you, he drives onto the scene, that's his car. He was into the left-hand drive American cars. And, you know, even though a Malibu is nothing special, when you're driving a Malibu in Japan, you know, you, you're somebody, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, but um, he was really, really nice. He'd come over and put his hand on my shoulder, you know, yak with me just a little bit, you know, and kind of coach me. But he was dead serious. This is a really simple role for him. This is uncommon for him to have a role like this, considering the type of movies that he actually starred in. So he he didn't he didn't just like slouch it off. I mean, he really made an effort. And you can tell when you watch his acting in the movie. He made an effort in that movie. So I was pretty impressed. My mother he's was like, in, "Oh, you know." Kind of, <laughs> yeah. He's he's very intense throughout the yeah. uh, the whole. Th where uh, whereas uh, um, Peter Willem Peter Williams, you could see kind of just you know um, you you and uh, Takatsuka Tora's character and your you know, these Boy Scouts and their antics, yeah, he yeah. just kind of laughs it off, whereas Kongo uh, um, san is like very, <laughs> like shaking, <laughs> shaking you too, and he's going to get you. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, it's, uh, by this point, he had done three Gamera films, and he was really the star, not just the, not just the top build, but I mean, he's through the entire film. Mm -hmm. He's carrying the entire film, and then this film took a, a you know, a, different direction where the the kids are carrying the entire film which i think is what yuasa probably always wanted for the series but yeah. wasn't able to do it until this this movie and then when it continued on the series continued on mm -hmm. you know he continued with that um theme uh so let's go to another one so what's interesting <laughs> here <laughs> oops um, 
I'm not going to be able to zoom in. But, yeah. Um, what I wanted to talk about here uh, for both of you is, um, so in these tokusatsu movies with giant monsters, it's very difficult to, uh, for the, there's not a lot of uh, scenes outside the film, uh, you know, shot in the studio where, you know, you're interacting with the, with the, uh, the monster characters because mm -hmm. they're just mm -hmm. human sized in a, in a suit, you know, actors uh, in a, human-sized monster suit and on a miniature set. So um, uh, what was, Linda, for you, what was your, uh, you know, you have to act to, uh, like you said before, the direction. Yeah. Um, there's this dinosaur in front of you and um, you have to act scared. Well, uh, th this, this was um, not serious. <laughs> I just, right. I just <laughs> happened to be somewhere where Kong's suit was and um, the photographer said, oh, go go over there. So I went over there. I was just fooling around. And uh, so he just took the picture. Because uh, I never saw uh, Nakajima-san until almost towards the end. And it wasn't on set. It was outside of the makeup room or wardroom, wardrobe, wardrobe room. Um, that's hard to say. Uh, so that's the only time I ever saw him in his outfit. In, or in his outfit, in his suit. Um, so I, your, your main interaction um, with any kind of um, prop or anything of the monster characters was basically a giant hand, or a giant yeah, mechanical yeah. hand. And, and a blue screen, <laughs> yeah. I think right. it was blue or green, I can't remember what color. Yeah, so that was it, that was my interaction. I never ever saw him or saw King Kong at all, just his big old hairy hand. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they would actually that was enough <laughs> and they would put you in there and then lift it off the ground yes like, yes yes how, how high god high well, enough <laughs> too, too high because i'm afraid of heights so it <laughs> it must have been maybe five six seven feet something like that but it was right. enough that it, it made me nervous right <laughs> cool and then carl um so your main, uh, oops, your main interaction would have been with the actor in the actual virus costume, as they just had one costume, whether it was when he's small size or when he's giant size, correct? Exactly. So the yeah. the only time that we actually interacted with virus in the in the suit like this, I mean this was staged for the, the Toho, I mean the Dai pictures. You can see all the markings on the um, these are postcards. But um yeah when we when we actually find him in the ship, we think he's he's another alien like this that's been captured by these aliens and he's our size, if you recall that scene in the movie. And that was the only time we actually interacted with him. He kind of sticks his one of his tentacles out and knocks Masao's hat off. And we smell that funky, smish, fishy smell or something like that when we were in that one one ball of the spaceship. Um, but then when we're on the ground, when the spaceship crashes and they he cuts all their heads off, all the aliens' <laughs> heads off, and then brings all their bodies in to make the giant virus, um, you know, then, of course, it's a guy in the rubber suit on a miniature set again. Um, but that was the only time we actually interacted directly um, at our size with the actual virus figure itself. Never that's with so that scene, by the way, where the heads come off. Yeah. I am constantly using that as a as an example as to how the camera films are actually way darker than people think about. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm telling you. I mean, if you think about that now, you go back to '68, you're like, wow, that was really dark. It was. I mean, it was pretty spooky. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah. <laughs> And also the, uh, you know, uh, virus basically closing his banana head into a yeah, spike and spike, right. stabbing Gamera's. Uh, yeah. I, you know, as a kid, I remember, like, feeling that, like, watching that on television. <laughs> like, oh, man. <laughs> right. Well, you know, uh, uh, you know, King Kong escapes as well. I mean, uh, you know, Doctor Who really, oh, yeah. he really yeah. gets his comeuppance at the end. You know, I yeah. remember being kind of afraid of that scene, knowing that it was going to come up, um, you know, as a, you know, eight or eight year old or whatever. You know. <laughs> but um, what, for both of you, what did you think when you finally, you know, you're making these films and you have to act uh, either on a green screen or to, uh, 
um, you know, sets or like Carl, when you're in the submarine and that's like, you know, a, a screen in back of you guys. And then you're in like a little half set and, and then they're shooting bubbles up through a fish tank. What did you guys both think when you saw the final product on screen? Hmm. Um, did it meet like expectations or did it exceed expectations? You know, I, I had I had no expectations. I had no <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like to work and so to me it was like, oh good, I get to work. Um I actually I saw it for the first time uh at the uh Tokyo premiere that they had in uh it was in the Ginza. And um I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. I, it's very difficult for me to watch myself on the film in the film because I um uh, my I think my acting was so so atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's embarrassing and so at that point I enjoyed parts of it but I did not enjoy the parts that I was in. Maybe one or two clips I went, "Oh yeah, that looks realistic." But the you know it was just really hard to watch it, you know, and that's why I never really told many people that I was even in the film. You know? <laughs> but I thought it turned out much better than than I had originally thought it would. Carl, how about your when well, you first saw? Well, you know, you got to think about it again. Once again, I was eleven, so I didn't have a whole lot of expectations from that sense of the word. But um, yeah, I mean, when we when you film us traveling through the water through a fish tank and the fish aren't moving outside your submarine but you're going like 25 miles an hour through the water right? and the bubbles are going straight up right you know, and there's one fish turns around and goes this way and goes back and turns around and goes back like this in the screen you know, you're like well i didn't pay it because i you know i was doing my job doing my acting while they were shooting me through the fish tank and uh, if you actually watch the submarine you know that was a wooden door that you pushed a button and everybody said well, where did the door go <laughs> you know, like where did that wooden that door go on the side of the submarine? Because it just didn't, like, you know, whatever. But uh, the actual sub, the globe at the top, it was a real sub. I mean, they actually launched it and drove around in it while we were there. We got to kind of ride around in it just for like ten minutes. But uh, so our heads were way up in the top in the real sub. But to to make it look realistic, we were down low, so we had the little side windows. And then, you know, the other parts of the set, I was like, oh, now I know why we did this and why we did yeah, that. So I actually yeah. got to see it. And I went, oh, OK, you know, you know, so because I didn't I didn't know, yeah. um, you know, especially like my my lassoing skills. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, Oops. Oh, I think we lost, we Carl. lost Carl. Looks like Carl might yeah. have frozen for a minute there. Um, but you know, this might be a perfect time to mention that it's, uh, we're about quarter till the top of the hour. So we're wow. a little less than 10 minutes away from being sort of the end of the panel. So maybe this is the best time to get some questions for Linda. Um, okay. I did see someone earlier, I tried to scroll back up and so see if I could highlight it, but I did see someone earlier ask if you have any experiences of, uh, of working with Miehama specifically. Uh, we had a couple scenes together, uh, but none that we where we had dialogue with each other. Um, so I, I had very little contact with her. And, you know, also, too, she was a huge star at the time. And I was a little uh, in awe of her and felt a little like beneath her, you know, in, in terms of stature. And so I but I just didn't have much conversation with her. And, and she didn't go out of her way to have conversation with me. <laughs> uh, just out of curiosity, now that you've sort yeah. of like, you've seen your own movie, I'm sure a few times now, uh, now that you've, we're so far, yes. far away from it. And that now that you've been to many of these sort of conventions, do you actually have a, uh, a favorite monster? Like maybe one you like more than others? A uh, King Kong, of course. King Kong, of course. That makes the of most course. sense, right? Yeah, yeah. And Godzilla, because everybody's crazy about Godzilla, you know. Um, I I have some friends that um, were fans that have become friends, and they're all crazy about Godzilla. <laughs> so, <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Monster Island Film Vault was going to ask, how would you like to reprise your role as Susan? <sighs> <laughs> I would like if they would just have used my voice. Yeah, they, I was going to ask you about yeah, that, Yeah, so if they would give me an opportunity to go back and redub the film, I, 
I would pay to, <laughs> to have the opportunity to do that. Because that's, <laughs> that's the one thing that really makes makes my skin crawl is when I, oh, that's kind of harsh, but it does. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. weird, right? Because you're like, that's not my voice. Not I remember voice. you sp and saying that specifically to me before. Yes. And if they would have used a voice that sounded, you know, less like a cartoon, I would have been happier. You know, I could have reconciled myself to that. But I, I for me, that spoiled. And it was one part that I, it kind of spoiled the the whole experience for me was when Arthur did that. Arthur Rankin. And it's, and it's not either. Uh, it's not an either version because you were recording right. your lines right. in the Japanese version in right. English. Yes. So a Japanese actress dubbed Japanese. you in yes. the Japanese version and then an, an actress yeah. in the United States dubbed you in the English version. See, and the one they used the, for the Japanese version sounds great. I remember when I, because when I went to the premiere, it was to the Japanese version, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was thinking the other day, my contract was with Toho. It was not with Arthur. You know, the contract that I signed was with Toho. So, um, and Rose and I talked about this many, many times when, you know, when we got back together, when I came back to the States. And, um, you know, so I don't know if, if my acting was so bad that they had to dub it, you know. Uh, but they had planned on dubbing everybody's voice. I mean, Rhodes had to redub his entire part when yes. they had to film that. It definitely sounds like he's been overdubbed by himself. <laughs> well, he's a bit, he was a bit dramatic. Yes. His favorite line he used to say to my mother and I when he, because we became friends, he would say to my mom and I, it's always a pleasure to say goodbye to you. And he just would laugh and he thought that was so clever. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was very dramatic. Even in his real life, he was kind of, you know, over the top. <laughs> All right. Um, well, one of the films we haven't really talked about too much, uh, and we don't have that much time, so I think I'd just really quickly ask you. Lovecraft mm -hmm. seventeen twenty three asked as well. How did you get the role for Green Slime? Even though it's a, a small role, uh, as we mentioned. King Kong had wrapped my girlfriend, uh, Toe, Toe A Studios was right behind where I lived on base uh, or the housing complex. And uh, my girlfriend said a friend of hers was making a movie over at Toe A. Uh, so we went over there to see her. And then the director um, or producer or somebody came up to me and says, would you like to do, would you like to work? I said, yeah. So that's how I got it. I, I didn't audition for what, you know. <laughs> Anyway, they uh, wrote the role especially for you, right? Oh, yes, they did. They, that bandage on my head was had my name on it. <laughs> well, there's some, uh, um, you know, some high profile uh, blonde extras in there, and, and you seem to get pushed to the forefront. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of the other extras had been in other uh, mm -hmm. either TV series like Ultra Seven. Mm -hmm. or some of the other ones, uh, but you kind of got pushed right to the forefront of the dancing scene and and your interaction with uh, Miss Paluzzi <laughs> trying to calm you down in the hospital bed. So uh, yeah. that was a good stroke stroke of luck. <laughs> yes. Well, I've well, always had a lot of good luck in my life. I was also going to say, what um, you were telling me this the other day, but um, the movie actually wasn't called The Green Slime when you were filming it. Yes, I don't remember what it was called, but I found a script the other day called Battle Beyond Earth or Battle something like that. Whoops. Oh, it, Carl. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I, I found a script and I think it's green, the original working uh, title of The Green Slime, but I'm not sure. But I, the cover was green. I don't know if that makes it do it. <laughs> Might be a well, telltale uh, sign. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, that's an omen right there. We'll investigate that a little bit more. Okay. But uh, I thought that I thought that was pretty interesting. That um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's not the Japanese version, and it's not the it's not the Japanese title, and it's not the um, uh, English title. You know, yeah, so I'm wondering yeah. at what point they decided to call it the Green Slime. Um, I don't know. We're getting a message from Carl, by the way, that he had a power failure and it just came back on and that his computer is booting. 
Well, unfortunately, uh, we are definitely out of time for the panel, but I wanted to say once again, thank you, Linda, so, so, so much for being uh -huh. part of this convention. Thank you, thank Carl, out there in the <laughs> Ethernet as well. We really appreciate you being here, and we're so thrilled that you were able to take some time out of your day to be with us and talk about your time on set and in Japan. Uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And let me say, um, for Linda and Carl, they have um, they both have uh, Facebook fan pages. Linda's is Linda Miller King Kong Escapes, so you can uh, join there and see some pictures and interact with uh, Linda, ask questions. And Carl's is Destroy All Planets. Fantastic. Uh, I should also mention that it, you know this is a replacement event for a live event, so there's no way yeah. to actually step up to Linda or Carl and get an autograph from them. But two of our dealers in the dealer's room, the virtual vendor room or the you know vendor section, do carry autographs from these two actors. Definitely check out Flossie's Gifts and Planet X Toys. I believe both of those guys have autographs from these two actors. So thank you guys very much for being here. Thank you guys all for watching live. It's been really great seeing all the interaction in the chat room. And uh, we will be back with another Q&A tomorrow with Dore Kraus. And, oh, yay. Yeah, Dory. and I'm excited about that. I've never been able to talk to him. And also, uh, I got to bounce because I'm on a panel. I'm on the Eastern Front with August Rigoni coming up next on the Kaiju Cast channel. Thanks so much, and we'll okay. see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.